Well, we've been setting the agenda for the judiciary and perhaps by extension the Attorney General of the Federation. But right now we're switching gears to a position that no one has been appointed to yet. People are still looking at who will the president make the Minister of Youth. It's interesting that it's now been taken away from the Ministry of Sports. So the minister who was there, uh, or before now, it used to be the Ministry of Youth and Sports, or Sports and Youth as the case might be. Uh, but now, it's now a separate entity by itself. Don't forget that before now, there had also been protests. I think someone was appointed then. People said, oh, isn't he 60 years old? <laughs> but hey, we understand that, you know, that person has now been moved to another ministry and that position has been left vacant. Now, whilst we're hoping that somebody else will be appointed then, the person will be very conversant uh, with what the youths want. Let us speak with uh, somebody who still... I shall say, identify as young. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> On this table, Risala Abiola is the president of the Progressive Sisters Network, uh, a member of the All Progressives Congress. I, I think he used to be a member of the P BOT. Has it been reconstituted? Uh, so, uh, we were appointed, but uh, it was never really inaugurated. Essentially, people were appointed to the Board of Trustees, but... The inauguration never actually took place. That was quite a while ago. Okay, so we'll just say um, that you are a member of the All Progressives Congress and also a youth and gender advocate. You're That's welcome good. to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So what were your initial reactions when you, when you heard that the, pres the president had appointed somebody to that particular ministry who was not exactly a youth, who was in his 60s from what we understood? Um, so... Uh, Essentially, for those of us who are in the youth demography, there's been that um, advocacy for quite a while um, for the ministry to be manned by somebody who actually does fall within the youth age bracket. Now, in advanced countries, usually some of them would say youth is between 16 to 24. Some would extend it to 29, some 30. Um, in Nigeria, I believe it used to be 35, the national youth policy. Um, some countries would probably put it at 40. But because of the economic realities in the different countries, we're not able to define youth the same way. In the West, for instance, you would expect that once you turn 18, you're able to live on your own to fend for yourself. But that's usually not the case with most um, young people in this part of the world. So, um, there's been advocacy on for quite a while for the ministry to be headed by somebody who actually does fall within the youth demography. And the reason is because um, we, we feel that um, as young people... Heading that ministry, essentially, the, the, the duties, the responsibilities is about um, managing the agitations of young people. And it helps when it's somebody who looks like them, somebody who speaks like them, somebody who can communicate like them, somebody that uh, can relate to the issues and the concerns of young people. So there were quite a number of people who were not too happy with the fact that um, the person who had been assigned to that ministry was way beyond the youth bracket. But that's essentially what has always happened. But then the president, as a listening leader, we also had um, agitations from people from the South-South region saying, we need a ministry for the Niger Delta, and uh, we don't think this should be off the table. And the president has shown, um, since he took over the reins of power, that he listens to feedback and is very uh, mindful about um, uh, taking decisions that uh, the people will be happy with. Essentially, it's a democracy, and you have to listen to your people. So that was why I believe um, the, there was a minor reshuffle of the cabinet prior to ministers being inaugurated. And the person who had previously been designated as Minister for Youth was then reassigned to the Niger Delta Ministry. Now, when that happened, um, we also saw a change in the person designated to handle the Ministry for Blue Economy and Transportation as well. And then when that happened, uh, the initial statement was that um, the Ministry of Youth would be reassigned to one of the ministers who had been appointed. So when ministers were inaugurated and the Minister of Youth was not named and the ministry was actually not reassigned during that process, young people across the country, both within the party and um, outside the party system, began to agitate for those that they believe are up to the task to be appointed as a minister for youth. So as it is presently, young people believe that the spot remains open. If it's going to be merged with yet another ministry, there's been no indication regarding that. And I think um, the fact that it's been separated from sports to begin with and that it was designated, you know, set aside on its own, kind of gives an, uh, an idea that um, what the administration wants is for that ministry to act on its own and to focus solely on issues that have to do with youth development. So young people are anticipating, we're wondering who it is that's going to represent us in the Federal Executive Council. That's a challenge would be to even know what the agenda would be 
or whoever will be that. Good saw you develop and whatever. I, I don't mean to interrupt your question, but I want to quickly finish. I, I had a follow up. So, oh, okay. yeah, I always find it a bit concerning when people say, oh, well, it's only trite that, you know, if you're talking about young people, you shouldn't have a conversation without them being there. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they say a ministry must be headed by somebody in that bracket, you have to ask whether these people have the requisite experience, mm -hmm. uh, what it would take to man a ministry, for mm -hmm. instance. Why must it be somebody who is within the... You're looking at somebody between 18 and 35? Is that what you're well, looking at? Uh, ideally, so this is Nigeria, as I said earlier. Um, ideally, we think any age range from early 30s to perhaps 40 or early 40s at most, as long as they can relate to the you know, conditions of young people that can communicate with young people. They look the part, they sound like it. I believe it should be ideal. So preferably anything from early 30s to perhaps 40 at most, I think would be ideal. Would you That's be concerned about opinion. whether or not they have the experience? Okay, so in response to that question, I would say it's a tad discriminatory to simply assume that because a person is young, then it means they don't have the required experience to head a ministry. Dr. Beta Edu is presently the uh, youngest member of the Federal Executive Council. She was commissioner in um, uh, Cross River State. Before then, she had held a number of um, positions in public service as well. There is no shortage of young people within the APC who have experience, whether it's within public service, within uh, the civil society. Many of us actually started out with um, youth in youth activism, youth civil society organizations, voluntary youth organizations, before then transitioning to mainstream politics as members of the party now. And even if the president chooses to look beyond the party, which he has a right to, he's president for all of Nigeria, not just for APC members or APC youths alone. So if the president chooses to look beyond uh, the party, there are a number of uh, young Nigerians within, say, 30 to 40 or even early 40s who have done exceptionally well in their respective fields, could be in the private sector. A lot of Nigerians are doing really well in different fields and they are really young. And man in the ministry is more about the administrative responsibilities. And now let's take a look at the youth ministry itself. Presently, um, if you, if you, now that the sport um, component has been taken out, the youth ministry now has the National Youth uh, Service Corps, NYSC, and the Citizenship Leadership Training Center, which uh, I think we popularly refer to as Man o War, as the parastatals under it at the moment. So um, those are the two agencies under it. And I think, um, I tying into the question that he also asked, I think I'll answer that um, as, I, as I go along, Indeed. about setting an agenda for the youth ministry. The first thing um, that I think we need to be mindful of, especially as young people, is the fact that it's not just about heading a ministry or being minister or just having a young person occupy the position. Whoever it is also has to understand that they have the responsibility of properly communicating the vision, the ideals, the mission of this government to young people and ensuring that they take the feedback from the youth demography back to the president. Um, Nigeria's youth make up the bulk of our population, depending on what um, sources you're looking at, they would either, either put it between between 62% to 70% of the population, which is entirely constituted by young people. And this means both young men and young women, people within the 18 to 35 age bracket. If we take that and extend it to 40, we have an even bigger chunk of the population. So what this person is supposed to do, um, aside just um, the issue of managing parastatals or just, uh, you know, supervising the work that is done in the Ministry of Youth, we also have to understand that there are lots of um, opportunities that can be explored for young people. Take the Ministry of Women Affairs, for instance. They have a lot of work that they do in collaborating with um, development agencies because, you know, women are a very special demography. There's a lot of attention all over the world when it comes to building the capacity of women, empowering women. They're able to use this to actually partner with development agencies. And I don't see any reason why the Ministry of Youth Development will not be able to do the same thing. And I think um, actually taking the Ministry for Youth Development and separating it from the Ministry of Sports is a stroke of genius in the sense that prior to now, without prejudice to any of those who were appointed to head that ministry, prior to now in its uh, previous form, the Ministry of Youth and Sports concentrated a lot more heavily on the sports component of um, the, their mandate because that was where a lot of things were happening. But now that the Ministry of Youth gets to stand alone, we have to be very innovative in how that ministry is managed. If we look at um, our recent history, Youth agitations have shaped recent developments in Nigeria's landscape. 
we look at the NSAS agitations, we look at the 2023 election cycle, a lot of those who happen to be disillusioned with the current political system are young people. And that's why, for instance, Labour Party was able to attain the kind of mass that they did. Most of their supporters are young people. They had issues with the establishment political parties, in their opinion. And the challenge actually wasn't that um, government wasn't doing the best that it could to actually prioritize youth affairs. The Ministry of Youth and Sports, for instance, then launched the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund. There were quite a number of other initiatives targeted at young people. But at the same time, I think we've always had a challenge with being able to properly communicate um, these things in a way that our young people will probably understand. We need to be able to meet young people where they are, to be able to speak to them in ways that they understand, to be able to listen to them. Because another challenge with young people, a major agitation with people in my generation is we feel like we talk, but we're not really being listened to. Perhaps and we feel because, like- My apologies, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps because um, the communication mm -hmm. between the two generations uh, they are speaking different languages altogether. Okay. Um, I've had engagements with uh, public service uh, officials in uh, a, a particular state, and guess what? Uh, before a young person who is in charge of the social media in that particular ministry could put out anything for young people of his own age and in their language, mm -hmm. he had to go through levels of authority you know, that do not understand that language and do not understand their approach. So tailing back to the question Mark we asked about experience, mm -hmm. it's not just, the, it's the minister that is going to be seen, yes, like the body of a car, like mm -hmm. the headlamps of a vehicle, yes. but the engine, no one sees it. And that's what, you know, drives the vehicle. That's what makes the vehicle move. So no one is going to see the ministry. No one is going to see the directors who is probably in his 60s and uh, many other op uh, officials who do not speak young people's language mm -hmm. and have to report, and the, the people at the base have to report to people who don't understand their language in order for the job of the minister to be seen and that communication that you are talking about. So how do we navigate that? Okay. How does that minister navigate that conundrum? Because if that engine is not moving, that car ain't going nowhere. So, um, uh, I would like to say that in response to that, first, what the president has demonstrated um, since being sworn into office and even during the campaigns was that he's somebody who really does value youth inclusion. And if we look at the cabinet, there are some strategic positions where we have relatively young people. Dr. Beta is about 36, I believe. Um, Honorable Olubo Mitunji Ojo is about 41. Uh, the Honorable, com com uh, Honorable Minister for Digital Economy, Dr. Boson Tijani is in his 40s. He also has a lot of um, work that he's done in the tech sector. Speaking about experience, uh, particularly for uh, young people, and then of course, many of the president's um, aides, his special assistants, senior special assistants, the young people as well. Now, speaking about um, experience in um, uh, perhaps public service or maybe the private sector, as I said earlier, there is no shortage of qualified young people. If we're looking at within the party structure, I wouldn't want to start naming names, but I have seen um, resumes of quite a number of our, of our people in the APC, young progressives, who are qualified in every sense of the word. And uh, there, uh, we, 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 we have young people who can man this ministry from virtually every region of this country. Um, if it's about uh, youth politics, actually understanding youth movements and youth politics. Many of us, as I said earlier, transitioned from that um, background into mainstream politics. If it's about experience in public service, many of us have worked in different roles in government. It's about, if it's about experience in the private sector, Apart from our political uh, activities, many of us are also uh, professionals in our respective fields. And I think that's one thing that um, um, Nigerians generally don't seem to perhaps understand about people who are actively involved in politics. They talk a lot about technocrats, you know, without realizing that a lot of politicians are technocrats as well in their own r r right. right. And when I speak about communication, sorry, please. When I speak about communication, um, I'm saying that y y young people... Um, they're very particular about this ministry, for instance, because it has a tag that says Ministry for Youth Development. You have a Ministry for Women Affairs. Everybody expects that it's a woman who is appointed there. You have a Ministry for Youth Development. Young people expect that um, somebody who falls within the youth category, who can really be defined as a youth, should be the one to head it. 
So if you, if you appoint a man as commissioner for women affairs in the state, for instance, there's going to be an opera. Some states have done it and it was, you know, it, it earned them um, widespread condemnation for, for, for doing such a thing. So it's, it's like these spaces have been uh, specifically assigned to these people. And now young people are saying that they are hoping that this time around, especially now that it seems that um, a fresh appointments will most likely be made, that this time around it is somebody who is truly young, somebody who they can trust to actually safeguard and protect youth interests, somebody who understands that it's just, it goes beyond just, um, overseeing the parasitals attached to that ministry and actually has the capacity and uh, the, the political will to set a, an agenda and build a new youth ministry, a solid new youth ministry, make significant achievements in that role that subsequent ministers for youth development can then build upon. And for me as a party member, for those of us who are within the party, we also hope that it is somebody who can actually contribute meaningfully, add value to the president's agenda for youth development, because it's something that he's also very keen on. He was very particular about that um, during the campaign, and he's been very particular about that as well as president. Boogie has got some questions for you. Go ahead, right. Boogie. Yes, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, good morning from Lagos. You know, your arguments are quite convincing. But then again, um, some of the politicians within your party who fall within the older age bracket could argue that, um, you know, age is of the mind and, you know, an older person within a, an older age bracket can also be young at heart and connect with the young people. But, but that's that's another matter entirely. Um, you've talked about, you know, some of the work that the Ministry of Women Affairs uh, does with development partners that also borders on, um, you know, matters that affect young people. I'm wondering what your thinking is of where the new minister that will be appointed for the ministry, now that it has been separated from the Ministry of Sports, what levels he or she can engage with young people because there's so many issues that affect young people when it has to do with mental health, sexual and reproductive health, uh, sexual and gender-based violence. What are those um, uh, um, levels of engagement that you think is possible, the potentials and the prospects, uh, you know, that can help solve these issues and such that it will not overlap with the Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, uh, and uh, poverty alleviation, I believe. Okay, so um, uh, in speaking about the work being done at the Ministry of Women Affairs, I actually made an example with how they're able to partner with development agencies to push for sometimes funds or interventions in certain areas that have to do with women specifically. Now, for young people, as you rightly noted, there are a myriad of challenges that young Nigerians are facing. Um, in different regions of the country, we have issues with drug addiction, for instance. Um, our students across tertiary institutions, especially the female students, they speak often of harassment and um, being compelled to do things that they normally wouldn't, um, you know, by people who are in positions of authority and should not be taking advantage of them in such a manner. We have issues with um, skills, um, digital skills, um, empowerment, economic empowerment. And I made a an example earlier uh, with, the, the, with the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund that was um, launched during the last administration, the first of its kind really from the ministry, if I'm not mistaken. So what I'm saying is there's a lot of work that will be done by, the, by whoever is appointed Minister for Youth that will actually um, have bits and pieces of um, work being done in other places. For instance, if you're going to tackle the drug abuse epidemic, I would envisage that whoever it is that's um, appointed Minister for Youth would, uh, would explore collaborations and partnerships with um, perhaps the Ministry of Information and National Orientation. They could partner with the National Orientation Agency, for instance, to come up with behavioral change communication programs on the dangers of drug abuse, um, knowing how to communicate with our people regarding that specific issue. They, they, they should be able to influence um, the decisions that are made in other places. They should be able to engage extensively for the sake of young people. And then we also look at things like um, uh, skills, skill acquisition, economic empowerment. A lot of that is being done in the uh, Ministry for Digital Economy. But you know, there, there are ways that uh, partnerships can be explored and alliances can be formed. And um, it would actually help the ministry for you to also be able to influence how these things are done. And there are other uh, uh, projects that could be domiciled within the ministry itself. And this is where uh, development agents is coming. So anyone who has experience with public service and with governance understands that the major challenge of government is not actually... Um, the lack of willpower to get things done is that we have financial constraints. So usually, um, sometimes if, if a person in charge of an agency is resourceful enough, when budgetary constraints exist, 
What I think would have to be done is you look at um, the, the, the president's agenda for youth development. You look at uh, the, the, and the, and the, and the key performance indicators that are set for whoever it is that emerges minister for youth development. And then you look at areas of concern for development agencies that are working within the country or within the continent. And then you find areas of convergence and then you can engage those development agencies on those issues so that you can get support from them. That's why they exist. And they're actually really usually very willing to do good work to support causes that they believe in. So sometimes um, um, it's not just about the uh, budgetary allocation that is made available to a ministry or to an agency. There are also other avenues that can be pursued to be able to get things done in certain re Guards. I also see um, um, collaborations and partnerships with perhaps the Ministry of Arts, Culture, and uh, and uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Arts and Culture. Uh, we have a lot of young Nigerians doing really well in that space as well. So definitely, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm looking forward to um, collaborations between both ministries in future. I can also think about education. I can think about um, quite a number of other ministries that I think uh, their, their work could intersect occasionally. And it's very key that we have somebody who who understands that you know that, that there is a whole lot that can be done with that ministry just beyond what we have and what we see on paper and that um there's work to be done in actually building a formidable youth ministry that can deliver on mr president's vision for youth development in nigeria you do not see um you know the challenge of the multiplicity of agencies going after the same issues there but I, i'd like to manage my time to ask uh, another question you can answer that you know in the course of this how important is it for a young youth minister to intervene politically in the area of uh, political participation for young people particularly when it comes to electioneering uh, times which is when there's a lot of uh, advocacy for the um huge financial demands, you know, are placed on interested politicians, which is a point of disqualification for many Nigerian youths. So um, I would say that I have, well, I and quite a number of other uh, members of the youth wing of the party have actually been at the forefront of working for, um, would I say, a, a saner uh, uh, climb financially for political involvement. And our party has recognized the need to support young people. During the last election cycle, uh, there were waivers for young people below a certain age. Uh, we had our stakeholders in the party really push for that. Um, one of them was the then Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Femi Gwajabi Amila, uh, who actually really pushed for that. And we were able to get that uh, skill through. And um, as Minister for Youth now, the work of a youth minister is different from the work of a national youth leader of a party. So I believe that a Minister for Youth would have to engage more broadly to ensure that um, uh, young people generally across political parties have a better chance of emerging as candidates. And I think it's, uh, we, 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 we need a two-pronged approach. The first is through engagements with political parties. We have IPAC, which is like the umbrella body for political parties in Nigeria. And I'm also aware that there's a forum of um, national youth leaders of political parties in Nigeria. So I would expect that on such a topic, um, uh, whoever it is that is a youth minister can engage these bodies with a view to um, getting a reduction across board for young people in politics. And then we also have the issue of legislation and policies. And now I was part of the um, Not Too Young to Run campaign movement. Many of us were very actively involved in that campaign to reduce the age of eligibility for office. And it was a successful campaign, alhamdulillah. And, um, uh, but what um, Not Too Young to Run did is that while we were able to uh, uh, get a reduction in the age of eligibility for elective office, We've still had a fair bit of we still have a fair bit of work to do in actually enabling young people to be able to run. So we have a lot of young people saying, OK, yes, we know we're not too young to run, but we still think we are too poor to run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's the issue of our finances. And another thing with that, again, is um, if we look at advanced democracies, politics is expensive everywhere in the world. I ran for national youth leader of the APC last year. <coughs> And what I spent on that campaign would easily deliver a House of Reps um, campaign in some states. So, so it's, it's, um, it's um, politics is expensive everywhere in the world. And I think we also need to, I say this all the time, we also need to imbibe a culture of supporting candidates that we believe in, especially young people, especially women. We have to understand that we don't have it like um, uh, the you know, more established people do or people who are moving from well-established careers in the private sector into politics. You can't expect a young person, very few young people can muster 
resources on the same level that our older uh, politicians would be able to. So some of us, we were able to maybe pool resources, support each other, but that's not the reality for quite a number of people. So I think as Nigerians also, and I know that there seems to be, uh, you know, a very high trust deficit in the Nigerian society to what we put in politics generally, and they don't care if they're young or old, but we need to also identify people that we think are qualified to occupy these offices and to support them with what we can. During the 2015 um, campaign, uh, 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 campaign, uh, I was on the Muhammad Buhari campaign team for the APC, and I recall how, how actively people wanted to chip in their own money because they love this man, they believed in him, they wanted to support him. So I think as young people, one, we need to really do our politics right, make it clear that we're truly people oriented. The main reason we're participating in politics is because we want to contribute to nation building, try and build trust and confidence in the people. And perhaps if they, if they believe us, they, they might also be willing to support us. But generally, Nigerians, I think, also need to learn to be willing to put their money where their mouth is. If you think someone is young and they can get the job done, then please, by all means, support them. Well, I guess everyone has heard your message. Uh, Rinsola Abiola, we have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning, setting an agenda for whoever will be Minister of Youth. Uh, she is a National Coordinator, Progressive Sisters Network. Oh, don't let me say what I think about that. <laughs> She's also a, a very catchy name. <laughs> <laughs> She's also a youth and gender advocate and an active member of the APC's Youth and Women's Wings. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for again. having me.